All right, what's up guys, Spencer here. In this video, we're gonna be going over the applied version in R for elastic net regression. In a previous video, we went over the logic or the theory behind the elastic net regression, and that's linked down below. So make sure you go and check that out before you view the elastic net regression stuff. Also, feel free to check out the L1 and L2 norm videos or the ridge and lasso regression videos uh, because those are building blocks to use elastic net regression. So without further ado, let's get on to it. In the previous videos, we went over lasso regression and ridge regression. So we'll be using the same exact code format and we'll be tweaking a few parameters to use elastic net regression. Since by definition, it is the combination of lasso and ridge squeezed together and voila, you have elastic net regression. So let's run all the code that we have written up so far. And now let's begin with the elastic regression. So the only reason why I'm using uh, the same code is that it already generated the training and testing sets that we will be using over here, X test, X train, and Y test, Y train. It's already cleaned, it's already pre-processed, so I'll just be using that, and by the end of this video, we'll have a comparison between lasso, ridge, elastic net, and linear regression to see maybe what models we could potentially use for this data set, the Boston data set. And more information related to the data set can be found over in ridge regression, the video. And I'll make sure I uh, link it down in the description below. So go make sure you go and check that out so you have an idea on, I suppose, like what's happening. But anyways, let's get started with the elastic regression. So let's create an elastic net. And we'll be using the same exact function, the GLM net. And that came from the library GLM net over here. And let's get our X train, our Y train inside of our parameters. and. This is where we change the scope um, between lasso and ridge. So ridge, as we know it, all the way up here uh, in our previously written code, ridge right here had an alpha value, you set that to equal zero. And for lasso, we had an alpha value of one. To get the elastic, uh, we would have to have a value between zero and one where let's just use 0 0.5. But in general, if you have 0 0.7, for instance, you're gonna have the overall model more weighted to using that of that of lasso regression. Uh, and if it's closer to zero, then we'll be having more of a ridge regression uh, model that we'll be using for if the alpha value is close to zero. So let's get something right down in the middle and we'll be using 0 0.5. That's all, this is also like a tuning parameter as well. You can play around with, I'd say like what type of alpha values are more uh, susceptible to predicting better results, something of that sort. But since let's keep it simple, um, our, our alpha value will be 0 0.5. And as usual, our lambda value is going to be our lambda array. And in previous videos, we went over what this lambda array, but essentially it's a tuning parameter and the lambda value has, let's do a length on that lambda.array. It has 10,000 values between 0 0.01 all the way up to, I think like 1000 or something like that in increments of 0 0.1. So let us run that so we can generate our elastic net and let us generate the summary of this so let's do a summary on elastic net so we have 10,000 values associated with the lambda value uh, values that we've uh, conjured up and that looks fine so let us take a look of at the coefficients coefficients in respect to the lambda value to lambda. So let's do a plot, and in the previous videos, we're doing basically the exact same thing. Uh, we're plotting the, um, the model, in this case, of the elastic nets, and we will have the x variable as the, uh, it's not dev, we'll be doing that later, but we'll, we'll be lambda. Lambda, and let's label it as true. Take a look at that. 
And then this is what our elastic net looks like. So all of our values are being shrinked to zero and it looks like they're being stayed at zero to, I guess, minimize that specific cost function. In comparison, let's look at the lasso fit and see what that looks like for Lambda. Almost the exact same, but like, uh, actually very, very striking. Almost the exact same. As you can see, there's slight differences between the two in how how um, how much they become zero in such a short amount of lambda, um, but that is to be expected since we have a different parameter for alpha values equal to zero point five. So let us take a look at um, let's take a look distribution of variance. So let's do a plot of the elastic net. The x variable will be the dev and uh, dev stands for uh, deviants, but anyways, uh, let's label that as true. And we don't really need to worry about that warning message. It's just removing all of the uh, redundancies uh, between the x values and we're just applying the unique values. Anyways, um, so this explains the variance in terms of all of our uh, models, well not models, um, of our specific model for the elastic net in, in general. It's just explaining the variance and how well these particular features are explaining our overall variance. That's pretty much that. And we have values uh, being penalized as the coefficients become larger. That's largely due to lasso since it penalizes against very large coefficients. Um, so that's what's happening there. So now that we have like a general understanding on what's happening uh, between the relationships of the coefficients and the lambdas, let's get our predicted values. So y predicted of, uh, let's say elastic net. So elastic. So let's do this, let's do the predict of the elastic net. We're just passing in our function and we are going to be passing in the minimum of the lambda. All right, so we can just get the smallest one. Um, we, we do this because we're not doing any cross validation to identify which lambda is more, I guess, well, which is the best lambda to use for a given model. Uh, that'll be done in a future video uh, related to cross validation and all that jazz. So we will have the minimum of the lambda array. And then with that, we'll be plugging in our new X values, which would just be X of test. If we run that, we should have about 91 values. We should have 91 values. Let's do a length function on that, 91. So these are predicted values using our given model. And we associate the given model with the minimum lambda uh, that we are using and it just picks out that particular model that has the lowest lambda and it plugs in all of our x values into our function and that generates the y values that we will then evaluate. Now let's figure out what our r squared value was is going to be related to the elastic uh, values or elastic model. So I've already written up some code prior uh, in the other videos, ridge and lasso. So we'll just be using this and we are going to be replacing some of these values, which just be that value. And let us rename this instead of lasso be elastic. And let's run that. Sum squared total, sum squared errors, and the r squared value. So r squared of elastic, 0.65 compared to lasso. It's a little bit better than lasso by about 0 0.0005. So almost no difference at all. And this is the ridge, the r squared, 0.651. So the ridge is actually a little bit better. So you can probably up the alpha value closer to one to see if there's a more distinguishing difference between the two. But now that we have our R squared value, let us determine what our mean squared error is going to be. So mean squared error, so we have an MSE of elastic and we are going to be doing the exact same up here actually that I wrote written up there, which be hot swapping values, y predicted lasso, y predicted elastic, y predicted elastic, and MSE of elastic. We have that right there. So let's do this and that. So MSE elastic, let's do comparison. So 32.59, so that's lower than lasso, which is good. It's not lower than ridge, so ridge, ridge might be a little bit better than elastic. So we can 
probably up the ante for alpha uh, to ridge closer to zero uh, to see if it has a difference in effect if it's I guess the overall MSE is lowering but anyways let's do the RMSE of elastic um, and you just do square roots of MSE of elastic and you have the comparisons between the square roots and they are very very much the same so let's actually compare this with the linear regression model linear regression um, maybe the linear regression model might be more robust you might as well just use linear regression and compare to all these other more computationally strained um, models but let us do that so this would be really quick so we have let's say lm training linear model we're just going to be combining our x train and our y train together and we, the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to be using the lm function that requires data frames instead of matrices um, so let's run that we get a uh, let's get ahead on lm training and it looks something like this let's change that to medv medv uh, median value so let's do a call names on LM training, uh, 14th value. We'll be changing that to medv. So let's do that. Call names of, or let's do a head. That'd be better, LM training. So we have this. So that's good. Once we have our column names, let us do some training. Oh, let's actually convert this to a data frame. <laughs> just to double check so lm training we do as that data frame as that data that frame and do lm training there so now we know it's going to be a data frame now let's do the model so lm models do lm of the training so it'll be medv in respect to all of the other variables so current criminal zn indes etc uh, the data that we are going to reference is the LM training. So that's what it's doing there. So now that we have our LM model, let's do our LM predictions. Predictions. And let's do uh, same as always. Then we pass in our linear model and we pass in our new data, which is going to be our testing so let us do that so our testing i think we can still use our x test um x test here let's see if that works can now find lm predictions oh right because we're going to be associating the lm predictions with the predict here must be that okay that's fine so we just do this as a data frame we pass in the x test and that should be good lm predictions we should have 91 of these values. Yep, once we have 91 of those values, now let us do the MSE of linear regressions to like linear or something like that. So linear, and then we're just gonna be copying these values that we already know are the equations, so we don't have to do so many typing. Uh, here it is, length. So, that, so we have the MSE of the linear, and let us do the RMSE of the linear, which is just the square root, square root of the MSE, and that. And let's see what else do we need. Uh, we want the R squared values too. So let us get the SST and the SSE and the R squared over here. Bam, SSE, some squared of error. We do be doing linear and for the predicted we're just going to have ln predictions in here and let's run that sst ss linear and we need ss linear to replace sst and the r squared of the elastic 0.6512 correction there's actually for the r squared value we want that to be linear so that we can actually have all of our models so let's just rerun everything real quick so we can have more updated values we have the r squared this is going to be our ridge 0.6517 r squared elastic 0 0.65 0 0.652 and 0.652 so in terms of the r squared linear the linear regression in terms of explaining the r squared value and the variance it does a lot better than whatever other models that we had going on elastic lasso and ridge that's very interesting 
So, but let's take a look at the MSE. And we know that the MSE of the linear 32.47 is not as accurate as all of our other models, which is sort of to be expected. We have a hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video on elastic net regression. It's sort of the accumulation of all of the knowledge that we went through in terms of lasso and ridge. We just combined them together and now we have elastic net regression. So I really do hope that you like this. Make sure you comment if you have any questions and make sure you subscribe so that you can see the next video. Thank you for watching. <laughs>